hi and welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about relations and functions. We're starting here because these are really the mathematical objects that this class is about. This class being pre-calculus one or college algebra. It might be called that depending on where you're taking this course. So let's start with some definitions. We say an ordered pair or a point is of the form X, Y where that X and Y are in parentheses separated by a comma. Then given these ordered pairs, we say a relation is a set of ordered pairs. So let me show you what this looks like with an example. So we start with a set, we denote this using curly braces, and then inside of them we have our points. So I'm just gonna pick some, let's say one, one, two, four, zero, ten, and three, four. And so this would be a relation, and it's a relation because it's a set, a set is in curly braces, and it contains ordered pairs, and the ordered pairs are separated by commas. So this is one way to represent a relation. We often make it a little easier for us to look at by representing it with a table. We'll also be able to represent relations with graphing by graphing the ordered pairs, but for now we're just going to look at the table. So I typically do X in one column and Y in the other column, and then we put the X part of the ordered pair in the first column and the Y part in the second column. So we would have one, one, two, four, zero, ten, and three, four. So we're just rewriting those points that are in our relation that we were given in the set. So now that we have relations, we can define functions. So when we designate a specific input and an output, we can say a function is a special relation where every input value has a unique output value. So typically what we will see, sort of the standard or default way of doing things, is that we let the input be the x values and the output be the y values. So we can specify this differently, but if it's not said which one's the input and the output, you can assume the input is X and the output is Y. Okay, so this is our definition, but let's see how it works in practice. For this example, let's determine which relations are also functions. So I'm gonna give us three relations here. Relation A is the one we were using before, and we have two new relations, B and C. So these are written as sets right now, and just to make it a little bit easier for us, I'm going to rewrite them as tables. So we have a table for each relation. We have an X and a Y column. So starting with A, our ordered pairs are 1, 1, 2, 4, 0, 10, and 3, 4. Then for B, our ordered pairs are negative 1, 3, 7, 8, 4, 3, and negative 1, 8. And then for C, we have 0, 5, 5, 0, 2, negative 3, 12, 9, 2, negative 3, and 6, 1. Okay, so we have relations here. We have relations A, B, and C, and we want to determine which are functions. So when I'm doing these, what I like to ask myself is, does each input correspond to one output value? So what we'll do is look at the inputs, specifically the left column, the X column, and see how they relate to the outputs. So starting with relation A, if we look at the input column, we see that all of our inputs show up only once. So this means that this is going to be a function. So we have each input and it corresponds to only one output since each input shows up only once. So you might notice that the output of four shows up twice, but this is fine. We don't mind that the output shows up twice. What we're looking for is does each input correspond to only one output? All right, looking at relation B, if we see the X column, the column of inputs, you'll notice that negative one shows up twice. So we have negative one as an input two times, and this input corresponds to different outputs. So it corresponds to three and eight. So this means that B is not a function. It's a relation, but not a function. That's because there are inputs that have multiple outputs. So it doesn't satisfy our definition. Then lastly, let's look at relation C. 
So I'm noticing that the input 2 shows up twice, but when I check the outputs, I'm noticing that it's negative 3 both times. So we have 2 negative 3 and 2 negative 3. So basically this input still only has one output, it's just listed twice. It's repeated. So you might think like, maybe someone just wrote this table badly, they repeated an item that they didn't need to. Or you could think that in the real world, oftentimes we're going to get data points that show up multiple times, and so maybe this just showed up twice, but it is still a function because the input has the same output every time. So we would say C is a function, and our lesson from this is that repeated entries are allowed in functions. All right, so that's a little introduction into relations and functions. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.